PC Woods Kids Tech Talk. Well, today we're reviewing the AMD FX 8150 8 core CPU. This is part one. We're going to do a part two, which relates to overclocking it. Now, in part one here, we're really going to talk about the new release, which has four FX series CPUs. There's an 8 core, a 6 core, and a 4 core. You can see the temperature readings, the wattage, the use, the frequencies are different, and of course, the price is different. What um, AMD is trying to do here is add more cache memory, Okay, add some more performance, um, try to obviously compete against the Intel Core i5 CPUs. That's the main uh, objective here. As you can see, the um, CPU that we're looking at today runs at 3.6 gigahertz by default. It has turbo core mode enabled, so it jumps to 3.9 gigahertz, and then the maximum turbo core uh, can go up to 4.2 gigahertz, which is awesome. Now. When we compare it to the Intel Core i5, because that's what AMD is trying to do here with this, is saying it's got more cores, of course it does, it's got more level 2 cache, great, terrific, more frequency, well hey, that's always good, that way we don't have to overclock, even though these CPUs all come unlocked, so you can overclock them all. You can see here side by side some comparisons, so that you can get a good idea on what I mean by the differences, and of course we're going to take a look now at the... Um, kit here that I have on this unlocked FX processor. You can see here that in the box I've got the CPU in this little tin here on the side and then uh, I've got the Crosshair 5 formula from Asus as the motherboard. Throw in an HD 6000 series card and you've got the Scorpius platform for gaming. Okay, So that's the new platform that AMD has put together here. So that's what I'm going to be using, the new Scorpius platform. Um, and um, We'll do an overclocking video separately because I got a water cooling kit here as well, which I'm going to be using. So I plopped in the uh, FX uh, CPU there in the board inside of this awesome case that I just reviewed from Cooler Master, the Trooper. And uh, you can see here we're going to run on this Scorpius test system also a Revo drive, which I'll review separately, of course. And we'll go through things slowly so that way you can see all the different benchmarks for each of these components. Okay, so pretty cool looking system. Now let's see how all this put together runs at these default settings. Of course, I'm not overclocking the memory. I'm not overclocking the CPU. It's going to run at 3.6 gigahertz, just like uh, out of the box. And here we are in Windows 7 64-bit, running at about 23 degrees Celsius in my room. And the voltages are on defaults, fluctuating, of course, depending on demand. Turbo co code uh, core enabled. And you can see here all the stats, the motherboard version, the BIOS version. And uh, if you're interested, there's the memory settings as well. So that way you know exactly what I'm running and what I'm testing against. Okay, no doubt about it. This is exactly what uh, um, you need for a Scorpius type of uh, test system. Okay, or gaming rig. So, temperatures here on uh, full load, 36 degrees Celsius. That's pretty darn good. So this CPU cooler that I've got is running really nicely at default settings. However, I have to say temperatures do go right up there pretty fast when you overclock and run it faster. Now, looking at the settings here on 3D Mark Vantage, running the uh, performance scores on the CPU only, you can see here how it compares to the uh, Phenom 2s, the 6-core CPUs. A little bit disappointing there, I gotta tell you. When I compared these benchmarks on the PC Mark 7, 3D Mark 11, 3D Mark Vantage, really there was no real performance gain. I was really, really disappointed not to see much. Now, there was a little bit of a performance gain compared to the Intel Core i5, i7 when it comes to um, rendering, because the 8 cores are kicking in and they're helping to render, of course. So there was a little bit of a performance there, boost. But this is an 8 core CPU. I did expect more. Now, I also ran here the CPU Queen benchmarks and the CPU Zlib. Um, compression benchmarks as well to see how that stacked up against other CPUs and you can see here the uh, results that I got from those tests again not surprised to see it above a four core CPU I mean obviously it's supposed to be doing better than a four core but um, overall it didn't like jump to the top of the uh, of the charts right so it's it's not a core i7 killer that's for sure okay I'll tell you that right off the bat so again Maybe this is obviously something that you would want if you're doing some video rendering, a lot of multitasking, multi-threaded type of applications, single-threaded applications, not so good. However, you know, in games, I didn't notice any problems. I mean, uh, the, the games were smooth, obviously. Everything was running uh, fairly good. 
um, as you can see here in the Haven Benchmark 2.5 results I didn't have any problems there on this uh, video card of course the graphics card is doing most of the processing so there's no real point in talking too much about games but for those of you that are curious about some benchmark scores on this machine Crisis 2 gave me uh, fairly decent results here they are uh, for your uh, information okay again running on uh, 1080p those are the uh, high settings of course as usual and on Dragon H2 again uh, 1080p high settings those are the frames per second that I'm getting there so overall I mean I guess you could say it's a good value for eight cores because there's not that many CPUs out there for your desktop that have eight cores right this is pretty much it so um, it's really best for multi-threaded apps not for single threaded ones so not for everyday casual use you're not going to really see a performance gain you really have to push this to the limit and run specific types of applications to see the real benefit of it otherwise I don't really see the point of getting an eight core okay uh, you better off with a, with a four core or even a six core um, which is uh, obviously comparable or cheaper in price okay depending on how you look at it so uh, other than that, comment below, let me know what you think. I'd like to thank uh, AMD for providing it, and I hope you enjoyed this video, and stay tuned for part two.